feel like we're forgetting something, boys. I feel like we're forgetting something, but we'll see. We're Recordings live. are going. We're live. It's a plus. The tweet has gone out, Lewis. The tweet has gone out. Let's see if I can. The tweet is live. Accomplish this. The tweet is ready for you, Lewis. The tweet. I feel like we should just do the first, like, five minutes of the show ASMR. <laughs> it's making me all tingly. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to make you. It's I, making. I'm totally tingling. I do not yeah. want to make Leonard Kaney tingle in any way. You should start to do some. You should start doing those. What are you? Oh man, I should. Uh, I can't show you this right now. Well, let me grab this, Lando. You're gonna love this. Hold on. I can't demo <laughs> this for you, unfortunately. But you're gonna love this. So. I bought this product from Sennheiser, which I think they're on the verge of discontinuing because no one buys it. But these things are great. It is a pair of binaural microphone headphones. So you put these things in your ears, right? And each one has a mic built in. And so you could record binaural recordings, AKA the most luscious ASMR, skin tingling ASMR you've ever heard. <laughs> and it just plugs right into your iPhone. So lightning, right? You just plug it right in and then you can make these really beautiful binaural audio recordings and it takes your videos into like a whole new dimension. So like if you're recording something with your phone, it will record the left and right channels independently. And so you can like, hear people running around you. You can hear like the waterfall over there and the bushes rustling over there. It's really cool, and these things used to be 300 bucks, but as I said, I think that Sennheiser is retiring them. They haven't said this. I have a feeling that they're going to retire them in the next like six months. You can get these on eBay for like 80 bucks, brand new. Huh. Great technology. What are you using? And what are you are you using for recording videos? Yeah, so, um, so it's a new tool for recording videos now. Um, I have a video coming out probably today about AirPods Max, and I use these to record what I'm actually hearing on the AirPods Max. So I think these are going to be a great tool for like video makers and stuff, but also mm. like just recording your kid's birthday party. So if you're recording something with your phone, you have these in. Now, instead of having stereo mode, which I mean, the iPhone does a pretty good job with this anyway, but I think it broadcasts the sound the same out of both channels. I have to verify <coughs> this. I'm not sure. But with these, when your kid is like over here, you hear your kid over here, and then when they run over here, it moves the audio over to the other speaker. It's really cool. Place Shout out to everyone joining us. Sam's Far Sam Farrar is here. Jordan is here. We need a Patreon-exclusive ASMR vid. Oh, you know what? I was actually thinking about making one for you guys. I made one of me taking out the garbage, and it was just me rolling my bins out, and it was raining. And I listened to it, and I was thinking, this is actually really cool. Now I know why Leander gets all churned on when he hears this stuff. Huh. So maybe I can make a official ASMR vid for supporters. Garbage cans. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing as relaxing as some some rolling garbage cans. Maybe I should there? sign up to for the Patreon just so I can get in on that action. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That's definitely wow. worth the fifty-five dollars a month. <clears throat> well, you know what, Lewis? It's a long driveway. And when I'm rolling the bins, it makes a low rumble noise. It's like, you might really like it. It might be relaxing for you. Sounds. Uh, you should try it. That sounds miserable. <laughs> sounds like, <laughs> this is the this is the quality content that Pat Johnson is so What an advertisement. Me taking out my garbage cans. Hey, later, check out this comment from Donkey Con. He says, I, I love hard nips. <laughs> <laughs> Leander was just telling me he's like, dude, you gotta retire the nips jokes, and I'm like, people love them. People love. I don't the know. Nips we jokes. should do a poll. I think we should do a poll. Can we do a poll in here? Hashtag For those of you watching, we got nips. we got almost 20 people here. Nips jokes, yay or nay? Yay or nay? Do you like them or not? People can people say that it's too sensual, but it's not. It has nothing to do with your. Sounds a little sexist. Sexist. Everyone's got nipples. My dog has nipples. What are you talking about? Well, yeah, You're not a dogist, are you? You're not a dogist, are you? <laughs> I'm a I'll doggist. kick you off right now. You know, I can't stand seeing dogs' nipples. <laughs> no, you can't stand Work seeing your them. eyes. That's a that's a very specific thing to dislike. Is there a story behind it. that? <laughs> uh, no, I just you know, it's, that's just more than you want to see. You get to see a lot of stuff with dogs, don't you? You know. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, you geez. do. Like, isn't it kind of weird that like humans are so private about their body parts, but like a dog will walk out and his bunghole is just right there. It's like showing the whole world. It's like, hey, here's my bunghole. He doesn't care. Cat- cats are worse in that respect. Oh, yeah. Cats are like cleaning it, right? And they're like looking right at you. They're like. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this come from? Oh, yeah, the nip thing. God, Skip sorry. The nips. This is going Skip downhill fast. Yeah. Zach Hicks posted a double diamond. What does that's that the, mean? That's the ultimate nips <laughs> status. I see. All right. Lots of yays in there, Leander. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in really fact, I don't, I don't see a single nay. But everyone here listening right now is our uh, – these are our hardcore fans. Of course, our, our viewership is dropping steadily, so that might be their vote. <laughs> Wait, why? Yeah, you've turned away all the nip haters. <laughs> turned away all the nip haters. If you're a nip hater, you don't even belong here. Well, we've got his nipophiles now. <laughs> I'm starting a new streaming service called Nipify. We're doing an IPO. You should get in on it while it's uh, still low. Hey, I want to show you guys this. Uh, so Leander uh, was uh, or, and Lewis were telling me about this thing called what, what did you call it, Lewis? The Bernie what? The Bernie Placer or something? I can't remember what it's called, and I just closed the tab. <sighs> Should, shouldn't take me more than an hour to reload it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it here. Um, Bernie sits. Bernie. Oh right. Okay. So it's called it's called Bernie Sits. Let me see if I can load Whoa. this right here. It's this new app. Oh god, this thing takes forever to load, Lewis. It, I'm telling you, it's super popular. Okay, here we go. Browser mode activated. So this thing is called um, Bernie Sits, and you put in an address right here, and then it will put in. <laughs> Bernie Sanders at that address, and uh, I pulled up one of Bar- Bernie's favorite locations, and you can just see how thrilled he is to be in front of his favorite restaurant. I'll drop this in the Slack so you guys can see it. <laughs> Look how disappointed he is that his favorite restaurant is closed. He's he's waiting for them to uh, reopen. He's patiently waiting. <laughs> that, that looks like a Hooters for little people. No, he's just the first one in front. He heard that they were going to reopen soon because – uh, huh? it, it looks like it's about the height of him if he well, was he's to be standing Well, he's sitting way out in front of it. Oh, he's sitting okay. way out in yeah, front of it. Four, four he, yeah, He's the first one in line. <laughs> 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 he's the first one in line. All right. How's it like a going? very popular place, man. Well, they had to be closed because of beer bug. But they're going to be reopening. So I see. Once, once Bernie heard that they were reopening, he was one of the first online. But you know, he loves chicken wings. It it has <laughs> nothing to do with anything else. It's like when you get a subscription to one of those magazines that you only read the articles to. You know what I mean? He yeah, just loves wings. <laughs> Who doesn't? Big, big, he probably big. likes those uh, clam strips too. <laughs> what? There's some they nice have fried clam strips there. Ugh. Have, uh, really, clam strips? I thought so. I thought that was one of the other things. I, I've never been to one, but I I heard. Oh my god! I've never been to one, but someone told me. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> nice cover, Lewis. Have you been to one? I've never been to one. You've yeah, never... my wife dragged me to a couple. You're kidding me. They're really grim and depressing places. Well, there was. <laughs> she she needed a ride a... to work. She wasn't applying, was she? No. <laughs> For some reason, she liked that kind of thing. I don't know. It was it was because it was uh, we were staying in Arizona near uh, at our mom's, and it was the only place that any uh, you know from miles around where we could go have a drink and some will... cigarettes. Did we sat outside. And we saw this most amazing um, electrical storm. Uh huh. <laughs> I will say they've got great wings. Hooters does. They really do have great wings. I've only been there twice. It's been a long time. But uh, they had delicious wings. But it's it's kind of hard to screw up a wing. You take a wing, you put it in a dip, deep fryer, you put some sauce on it, you know? It's hard to screw that up. <laughs> All right. Look. Uh, there's we, one in Ronert Park, it says. Yeah. Like you had to look that up, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be one at um, Fisherman's Wharf. But really? it hasn't. It, it, uh, it hasn't been there for a couple of years. No, you know, it's right behind, um, you know where the in and out is? No, I don't. I haven't been to Fisherman's Wharf in about a hundred years. Since you were in your early thirties, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Beer, cheese, and pretzels. Hooters uh, Onion Ring Tower. Chicken breast strips. B R E S T. B 
T-E-R-E-S-T. Tot, lots of tots. This is fascinating. Yeah, this is good radio, too. Let's, uh... <laughs> read, it, read it the Hooters menu. Keep going, Lewis. It's, it's really nice trying to scroll down the page and watching the Mac just struggle to do it. Welcome to the Hooters <sighs> menu podcast, where we just read things off the Hooters menu, and then we Where's call the... it a day. Do they not have clam strips? I, I don't know what your obsession is with uh, clam strips. Well, now I feel... I feel like it's a euphemism, to be I don't, honest. I don't want to be, you know, uh, putting fake news out there. Yeah, please don't. Uh, let's see here. Shout out to Jason Autry, Dalva, Veronica, Tesla 420s here. Uh-oh. Welcome, everyone. We have a lot of Apple news. Am I in the right view? Yeah, we have a ton of Apple news this week. I don't even know if we're going to get through all this stuff. I mean, right after last week's show on Friday... All of a sudden, we started having all these huge news stories, which I rarely have seen so many big breaking stories come out on a Friday. So we got a lot of stuff to catch up on. Let's see here. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just get this show rolling because we're going to run out of time as is. I don't think we're even going to make it through all this stuff. But uh, let's call in Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire! Yes! Are you ready? Ooh, Yes! I'm going to Hooters after this. <laughs> oh, you are? Just came back from Hooters. <laughs> Just came back from Hooters. Fantastic. All right. Well, if you guys are ready to roll, let's go ahead and get this thing going. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Hookast, the best 30-plus minute album conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, Airfront Elijah. Joining me today, his great Apple intellect is matched only by his profound knowledge of cannabis paraphernalia, smoking apparati, cannabis cakes, Keith cookies, sesmoge, you, you guys you guys get it. He's the founder of Cultimac, Leander Candy is here. There he is. Also with us, many wonder how he keeps the elite team of Cultimac riders cranking out the content. He says the key is fear. You just put a horse head in a rider's bed from time to time, lets them know you've got your eye on things, you're keeping score. He's the managing editor of Cultimac. Lewis Wallace is here. Where's Lewis Wallace? There he is. <sighs> yeah, vegan, vegan horse heads. Where do you get a vegan horse head? Well, all the horses are vegans. <laughs> oh, the horses, you make the horses be vegans, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the head is actually real. <laughs> sure, it's a real head. <laughs> I don't even know where you keep such uh, such items. Where do you keep a horse head in your fridge? <laughs> <laughs> the real problem is what you do with the rest of the horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I didn't even think, that, think about that. All right, guys, we have uh, a ton of Apple news to talk about this week. Oh, my goodness. Let me see. Uh, let me see. What, what do we have on the docket this show? So we got to talk about Apple's first VR headset, VR AR headset, which uh, seems like it might be coming out sometime soon. We got some new information to share about that and why it might be a big, expensive disappointment. <laughs> also, the new iPhone may be bringing a smaller notch, better sensor shift cameras as the iPhone 13. Also, a return to Touch ID. Touch ID, what's going to happen to FaceTime? Stay tuned. Also, iPad Mini 6 might be getting the redesign it deserves. It's been a long time since Apple touched that. And it looks like we have some new updates right around the corner, which is great news. I actually really like the iPad <coughs> Mini. My wife has one. It's like her primary computer machine. And it's big enough where you can hold it and not have to hold like a giant iPad, but you can still type on it like a phone. It's a really great device. And also some news from last Friday, which, which we have to cover because this was huge news. And that is the potential MacBook Pro updates that Apple may have planned. <laughs> There's lots of maize and mites in this episode. But we got a lot of <laughs> accurate reporters, a lot of accurate, a lot of people who have accurate track records coming out with a lot of these stories. So I think a lot of this stuff is going to come to fruition. And I'm talking return of MagSafe, the end of the touch bar, more ports. Better M1 processor. This could be like one of the best Mac upgrades that I have personally seen. It's like the one that I've been dreaming of. The return wow. of the MacBook Pro, the 2015 inch model, or the 2015 model, but with all the stuff, all the current stuff built in, it could be a great machine. So let's see here. Before we dive into all of the fun, let me hit up browser mode. And oh, there's Bernie Sanders again. Hey, Bernie, we'll be back for you in just a moment. <laughs> let's th let's thank Squarespace for supporting this episode. 
Squarespace has everything you need to grow online. Simple tools for your big ideas. Start your free website today at squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. You just choose a template and you can see the template is gonna look great on any device that visits. They look beautiful if someone with a Mac visits or a PC or an iPhone or an Android. They scale everything to automatically customize everything to make it look great on any device that you have. You can build a plethora of different kinds of websites. Squarespace has all the tools that you need built right in. You can start a blog, you can sell products of all kinds, digital and physical products. You can brand everything from your website all the way to your email marketing because Squarespace has email marketing built in now. So everything's gonna be really cohesive, really beautiful. You can sell memberships. You can have a one-page website if you just wanna have a web presence to highlight your skills. You can build like a really simple, impactful website where people can, can come see your social media some photography that you've done. Maybe you could promote yourself to prospective employers. It's super simple to use, super easy to maintain all by yourself, which is why I always recommend Squarespace. And I have several Squarespace websites that I pay for. <laughs> so if you're ready to build a website for your new business or promote your skill set, have a presence online, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash cultcast and get started with a free trial. Build a website, see how you like it. And at, at the end of your free trial, if you want to continue your service, you can use code ColtCast at checkout. You will save 10% off your first purchase at squarespace.com forward slash ColtCast and use the offer code ColtCast at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase. And if you order a year of service, which is what I do, you get an additional discount. So you get a nice hefty discount with code ColtCast at checkout. All right. Let's see here. Leander. I think mm -hmm. I'm throwing this to you first to talk about Apple's first VR headset and why it might actually kind of suck. <laughs> My <laughs> words, not yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a big report this morning from uh, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman um, saying that Apple's first VR headset could be an expensive disappointment. So it's a bit of a bummer of a story. Um, so it's at Apple's first headset, which could launch as early as next year, will focus mostly on virtual reality experiences, Gurman says. And despite shipping with a limited feature set, it will still be wildly expensive. As, uh, so, quote, as a mostly virtual reality device, it will display all-encompassing 3D digital environment for gaming, watching video, and communicating, uh, end quote, reads the report. Um, AR functionality, the ability to overlay images and information over a view of the real world, will be more limited. So that doesn't sound like much fun. Uh, quote, the plans... <laughs> uh -huh. The plan suggests that Apple's first headset uh, will be far more expensive than those from rivals, which cost about uh, 300 to 900 bucks. That's a bit of a wide uh, uh, range of prices there. So um, Apple's more ambitious AR glasses, codename N421, are said to be at an even earlier stage of prototyping with a number, greater number of kinks to iron out. People familiar with the matter, who asked not to be identified for, for obvious reasons, say that those are uh, at least several years away. So the part about this story that was striking to me and actually rereading it, I think my initial understanding was actually wrong, was that when they said far more expensive than we first expected, I thought he was saying that they're going to cost three to $900. No, he's saying that they're going to cost more than the VR headsets that are going to be on the market already, which are already three to $900. Three to 900. So it's, it's going to be north of 900 yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking... How much do you think that they could possibly charge for something like this? Well, you know, uh, iPhone prices, right? It's going to be like twelve, thirteen hundred bucks. So that's what I was thinking. I was thinking like fourteen hundred, thirteen ninety nine, or something like that. But dude, who wants an Apple? Uh, I saw some interesting takes on this. You know, uh, um, people were saying that it's, it's not a bad first step because um, they'll want developers to get used to all the different um, programming frameworks. Mm -hmm. That they're using and so if they're going to build apps for ar devices they're going to need this as a, as a sort of a stepping stone device mm -hmm. um uh which you know sounded kind of reasonable i mean that that might be a reason for them doing it but you know i don't know if we had a sony i bought a sony vr headset a couple of years ago for the kids to play with mm -hmm. and you know they put them on once and then that was it it's now been it's been sat in the basement since then right. you know no one no one is interested in it mm. um have you guys tried any vr headsets Lewis, I don't expect that you have. <laughs> I strapped one on at uh, 
CES whoa, one year. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, Lewis. CES. Oh, yeah, oh I know. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I, I took it. I couldn't, like, really couldn't <laughs> rip it off my head <laughs> fast enough. Okay, so do you think I, this uh... is? <laughs> Well, sorry, Liz, well, sorry I, just, yeah. I, I, I ripped it off my head immediately. As I instantly felt, you know, not good. And part of that's because I'm, you know, so blind. And not only blind, but like super blind in one eye and not so blind in the other. So putting that thing on was just like, I don't know. I, I instantly felt woozy. And it's just obvious, like, this is not for me. There's no way this is going to work for me. Now, Apple is supposedly talking about having uh, prescription lenses in these things. I don't know if you saw that in that story. You mean, you that mean to be in. compatible? You're talking about the the AR glasses, right? I don't know if it was that. I thought the it was said generation. in this VR one they're talking about. No, I think this current generation is supposed to be different than the AR glasses that we've spoken about before. So right, this current but, generation is like a VR goggle headset type thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. And they're going to be compatible thought, with glasses, but they're not going to have prescription lenses built in. Are you sure about that? I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. Because if you've ever used a VR headset, you can you can use them with glasses. Most most people, well, most of them are compatible with glasses because they have space in there. But they don't actually have any... Well, you wouldn't get them for a, a specific prescription. You would wear your glasses underneath them because they're like mm. a pair of goggles that go over your glasses. But I think the AR glasses might be compatible with prescription lenses. Well, they'd That's have to have prescription lenses, wouldn't they, if you're going to wear them all the time? Right, yeah. Because I, I, otherwise, it'd be, 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 they'd be like those really huge, boxy glasses that you put over, like the sunglasses that they put over <laughs> regular glasses, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. I don't think Apple's going to make those. <laughs> Oh, that'd be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, might a lot of more... room for batteries and other tech, though, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right. The battery life's going to be amazing on <clears> those. Uh, I, uh, I've used VR before and it's interesting. It does seem like kind of a niche experience, but the one thing that VR does to a lot of people, and if you've never tried VR, you, you may not have heard this, is they make people really super nauseous. I played a bunch of really fast moving games at, at PAX several years back, the Penny Arcade Expo, which is a big video, video game convention. And I was using a VR headset and the constant motion all around made me feel super ill. So I was sitting there, and then all of a sudden, I, I noticed that I was, like, cold sweating. Like, I had a profuse cold sweat going. And then I started feeling nauseous, and then I started getting more nauseous, and I had, had to actually stop playing. And it probably took me an hour and a half to recover. You know, I was just, like, in the lobby of this hotel, sitting there, green. And I was trying to just take deep breaths and relax. But That's a fun experience motion, with yeah. $1,300 piece yeah, of equipment, right. isn't it? <laughs> they also made you wear like these little face diapers because the VR <coughs> headsets, they have pads that go against your face. Well, you're, if you're putting the, the face mask on one af one person after another, they, they get like face oils all over them. Sweaty, yeah. So you had to put like this face diaper on first that just covered like your eyes and your nose and then place the VR goggles over that. Oh, so, even more fun. Yeah, it was a very cool experience. So I guess my curiosity would be like what are these going to do for fourteen hundred dollars well i don't know how much they're going to cost that was just my guess so i'm i'm going to guess they're going to be over a thousand dollars what kind of experience are you going to get for for that price they do well, seem you, like they're you, gonna be you go and get an oculus now can't you and um yeah for like 400 bucks I, I don't see anybody talking about them at all you know like n n no one's talking about what what they're good for they're good for gaming or you know travel experiences or whatever you know they they don't seem to have any buzz like, I would, I'm kind of surprised, you know, that Apple wants to get into VR. Like, AI, I can see. Uh, oh, might be kind of cool, but VR. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what was that? All I hear was sirens. Wow. Yeah, sorry, the San Francisco's finest. Yeah. <laughs> what was your question? Um, I don't know, you know, I, it just, I'm, I'm kind of surprised, really. I mean, I can see there's a stepping stone for developers, maybe. Um, uh, and as I, But it's, it's such a niche device. I think it's niche in gaming. It's niche in... Um, you know all the other ass, all the other different um, uh, uh, you know things you can do with it. They're all yeah. niche. I don't think I don't, I haven't seen any kind of mainstream or you know popular um, uh, experiences that they, they they enable. Yeah, I agree. VR is super niche. It's been around for years and years, and yet it still it doesn't really have a high adoption rate. You don't see people playing VR a lot, and I think maybe one of the reasons is 
is people don't like having the face mask on. It makes you sick. And, and you also historically have needed like a lot of computing power to make the games work in VR. And I don't know. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like motion gaming. Remember when people were all like dancing in front of like their Xboxes and stuff to play games. <laughs> and ultimately people are like, I just want to be big and lazy sitting on my couch with a controller. I don't want to be moving <laughs> all around. I don't have to have a freaking headset on. So it's kind of like a, a cumbersome piece of equipment to wear and your neck gets tired and then you just want to sit in front of the TV and just do it that way. I kind of wonder if the experience is worth the uh, inconvenience of having the, the equipment strapped to your head. If they, were, if they were really lightweight and unobtrusive, like holographic in some way, maybe that would be cool. Anyway, so <laughs> Apple's oh. first VR headset may be really expensive and not do a whole lot. So kind of like the first iPhone, kind of like the first Apple Watch. So it's kind of in line with what we would expect with <laughs> a Gen 1 Apple device. Were you going to say something, Lewis? Yeah, yeah. I went and checked the uh, original r reporting on this. And it does say Apple removed the space that VR gadgets usually reserve for users who need to wear eyeglasses, which brought the headset closer to the face and helped shrink the size. Mm. And to address consumers with poorer eyesight, it developed a system where custom prescription lenses can be inserted into the headset over the VR screens. This is for the actual VR headset? V R, yes. I don't believe you, Lewis. Did you just make that up? <laughs> yeah. How, how dare you contradict my He's opinion. got some filter in his eyes that changes AI to VR. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be, that sounds extremely elaborate and complicated yeah. to have well, to put you know, in your own prescription lenses into these things. Well, once. <laughs> well, uh, isn't your prescription change over time? Well, yeah, but, you know, batteries die, too. I mean, um, and, and, you know, I don't think that it, it would be probably as big of a deal, you know, for instance, if you if you had it kind of close to your prescription, your prescription doesn't change that much, right? I mean, it wouldn't be, like, for me, anyway, with my eyes the way they are, if I could have a prescription in there, and even if it changed, I got two different pairs of glasses for the real life, right? Still, that initial base would be better than not having any prescription at all. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, the whole thing is bizarre to me. It, it, this start, made me start thinking, though, about uh, about the AirPods Max and and that really, you know, how nice those things feel in your head and oh, how, yeah. how much time and effort they took making those things feel good and, and just be like a pleasant piece of technology, right? So uh, it, it made me wonder, like, what would these things look like? I mean, I'm sure that they would not come up with something that's just, like, huge and bulky and horrific, you know? Hold on, I got it. If you want a preview of what AirPods <laughs> Max or what the uh, the new VR Max are going yeah, yeah. to look like. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Right. <laughs> you guys ready for this? This is yeah. an exclusive story. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Perfect. Oh, it all looks so real. Oh, it's pop. floating right in front of me. Oh, my. <laughs> Tim Cook, you maniac. You did it. All right, guys. <laughs> There's your first preview. Okay, Jordy. <clears throat> I hope that got some laughs and there weren't just crickets because <laughs> I, I couldn't hear what you guys were doing. <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing our heads off. We oh, were good. laughing so hard. Yeah. Oh, good. That's good. That was it. bobbleheads. All right, look. So let's move on to some more exciting news. Because people in the chat are saying VR is, de is dead. VR is too limited. Yeah, I, it's, it is interesting. VR doesn't seem like a super exciting technology for Apple to be pursuing. So maybe there's more to this story, and we'll see what happens when Apple actually releases these things to see what they're capable of. And Apple is good at surprising us, right? They'll, they'll do something that we weren't expecting. I can't imagine they're going to just say, hey, here's our version of Oculus, the, the Apple kill us. And we all and it just cost two thousand dollars. <laughs> it's just like Oculus, but it's triple the price. I can't imagine them doing that. Uh, let's talk about iPhone, iPhone thirteen. So we've got some news stories this week. Shout out to Mark Gurman for breaking all sorts of news stories this last week. The Germinator, he did it again. What can you say? He's the. That's why we call him the Germinator. So iPhone thirteen may bring smaller notch, better sensor shift cameras. Can I bring up browser mode on this and see if I can go to this? Give you guys something visual to look at. There we go, <laughs> baby. All right, so uh, Apple will finally shrink iPhone's notch for its next generation devices, while all will pack even greater 
censorship stabilization cameras, according to a new report, citing sources in the company's supply chains. That must be Ming-Chi Kuo in the story. This is Digitimes? I'm not sure. Uh, censorship, if you guys don't know, is a technology where the sensor inside the camera shifts around to reduce uh, like wobbles and, and, um, and movements so that your pictures don't end up blurry. It's a technology that is common in mirrorless cameras, like the Panasonic GH5 has sensor shift, and it works unbelievably well, even better than a lot of newer cameras today. Canon just added the same technology into the R5 mirrorless camera that they released, which is like a you know $5,000 camera, $4,000 camera. And um, they're bringing this technology to iPhone 13, according to this mm. report. Now, this technology currently exists on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. That was the only camera or the only phone that got this sensor shift technology. But in the, in the new iPhones, it's supposed to be coming to all of the different iPhones. So much more stable cameras in the new phones, less blurry cameras. The iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 12s are already so good at, at this. Like night mode, it's crazy how, how you can have a really low lit shot. And even with some movements, like the people are moving, and the iPhone is able to deliver a crisp image, that is amazing technology i mean i i don't i can't think of a single dslr or mirrorless camera that can that can do that I'm, I'm continually surprised by how good it is already so better or smaller notch sensor shift uh technology in the in the cameras okay so that's one good thing or two good things but the other big news and i was happy to see this and i hope this ends up coming to fruition oh am i taking over your story Lewis? this is all this is all you touch id <laughs> iPhone 13. Uh, feel free, you know. No, just, no, no, uh, no, no. I'm not going to take this. Right I, I'm not that guy. I like to I share. Thought Sharing thought is caring. Doubling loose. back to talk more about the notch. <laughs> no, I don't really uh, care that much about the notch. To be honest, it's like I don't really mind the notch size right now. I'm sure once it is shrunk, shrunken, <laughs> shrunk, then the size of this current notch minimized. will absolutely disgust me. But but until then, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, the notch doesn't really bother me. I don't, if they make it smaller, cool. But I don't think it's going to be a big marquee feature for me. So, sorry. Go ahead. Let's talk about Touch ID. Yeah. So, Touch ID could return in 2021 on the iPhone 13 or whatever they end up calling it. Uh, a fingerprint scanner might once again be part of Apple's iPhone line, according to a reliable source. <laughs> And that reliable source, once again, is Mark Gurman from uh, Bloomberg. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the Gurman cast this week, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. They've, they've been testing an in-screen fingerprint scanner, Gurman reports. Might be used in the iOS handset this autumn. Uh, the big reason, they're saying, is, you know, A, now they can actually do it. But the big reason they want to do it is because Face ID is kind of a bummer right now with everybody wearing a mask. Which, you know, makes a lot of sense to me. I can't tell you how awesome it is to use Face ID and how much of a drag it is to go in and have to constantly tap in my little... Oh, dude, I hate it. Thing. Don't you find it annoying? Especially I with, with Apple it. Pay. Yep. That's the worst of, of them all. I mean, the timing, it just... It, 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 it was bad, you know? So we make this big shift to Face ID, which was nice. Even though I always kind of miss Touch ID because there's a lot of instances where it's just easier to pick up your phone and have it un be unlocked and you don't have to like use your face to position your face in front of it to get it to work. And then, of course, pandemic lands. And now all of a sudden, whenever we go anywhere, we have to wear these face masks everywhere we go. And the stupid face ID never works. So now I have to, t I have to constantly type in my, my passcode every time I want to use my phone. And, and it's the worst when I'm at my – the height of my annoyance is when I go to the grocery store <laughs> and I have to keep opening my phone to, like, open my grocery list. Oh, right. right? Your list. Yes. And every time Very annoying. I go to, like, look at something and then I go grab it and then I come back, my phone's locked again, and I have to do it again and again and again and again. And it makes my eyeballs pop out of my head like that scene in Total Recall <laughs> where – Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah, yeah, his mask breaks. You know, you don't. Do you actually know what I'm talking about? I, I absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> we could forget that. 
yeah, that's, that's, pretty, that's wow. pretty good. Fantastic. <laughs> you gotta do a little more, more tongue tongue wagging though to really. <laughs> add to the you gotta go. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, you could probably set up a shortcut, you know, like, uh, you know, S-I-R-I, engage shopping mode, and it just turns the uh, auto lock off. I wonder if you do that. Yeah. You could also, would, they allow you to, would they allow you to turn off auto lock with a shortcut? I'm not actually sure about that. Well, you could extend it. You can go into your iPhone. And oh, and I actually it. do that a lot. Turn it, go in there and say, you know, don't do it. But it's just a pain to have to dig into the settings and do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so apparently they've been trying to do this for a while and and you know they just they dropped it after uh not being able to make it work without an actual physical button we've heard other rumors right that that I mean, the big rumor that didn't happen with the ipad redesign is they said that uh it was going to be on the the power button right and that didn't that didn't happen right i thought it did they they put face id on the power button yeah the yeah yeah, yeah they did yeah, so I, that's this is the one thing I'm skeptical about. This oh, twist. Holy they've cow. already got a they've already got a, a fingerprint scanner built into a button, so you could build it into the home into the not home button the the, the on off button of an Why iPhone, right? Why don't they just do that? Is it the same size? I think so. It just doesn't. It, it takes up too much space behind the button. I I, I forgot that they actually did that. <laughs> you know, it's been a while since we've uh, since we've talked about that. So I'm pulling up right now. This is the iPad Air that we're talking about. So the uh, fingerprint or the touch ID is built into the power button at the top. So Oh, now I feel like a moron again. Well, it's it's been a while since we've talked about this story. It's been so. a while since I've upgraded an iPad. Yeah, same here. Whoa, check out this animation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Powered by our most advanced chip ever. You guys can't see this. There's like this really trippy uh 3D animation that you can do on their website. Oh man. That's nice. Lando, you should uh you should boot up the sesh mode and take a look at this uh <laughs> this web page just going now. <laughs> okay. You guys want to see up. what it's like to be Lander Caney on in Sesh mode. It's just like this. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh yeah, that's actually a really great point, Lander. Why would they spend all of this research effort trying to build touch ID into the screen if they're able to just put it in the power button? That seems like a natural thing to do. They they'll just put it in the power button so you can do either or, right? I guess. I mean, it's, it makes, you know, they already have it, so. I mean, that'd be super nice. So you have, like, the power button on and this they, side right here, you know, and you would just, you know, just tap it, and all of a sudden your phone would be unlocked. That'd be perfect. Yeah, have, right. Have you used one of those? Have I used one of what? Those, the new iPads with the built-in, no, you I know, haven't. face. I haven't. But I just wonder how fast it is, how good it is. It It looks like it's, well... It's probably pretty fast, as fast as you would expect Touch ID to be, but it looks like it's kind of inconveniently placed. Like, when you're holding an iPad to have to touch the, the top power button, it's on the huh. top right of the iPad. Huh. That'd be pretty inconvenient, I feel like. You gotta, like, reach up your hand and, like, touch it up there. That's well, not, that's, that's not, not like you got like this. It's not 20 feet in the air. You have to <laughs> ladder it. Yeah. You're holding the iPad with two hands anyway, probably, right? So... I yeah. don't ever hold my iPad with two hands. I always hold it with one hand. I have a, Ooh. I have the magnetic folio on there, so I just kind of like, like keep my hand at the top, you know, and just like have it open like a book or something. I don't know. It just seems like an inconvenient place to put it. On the iPhone, though, it'd be much more convenient if you just built it right into the power button right there, right, and then like you just you just press that. Like cause you could you could have your hand on it right there. In fact, that'd be super convenient. You're holding your phone, and then you just, you know, touch it just like that. Oh, look at that. It's unlocked. Oh, I activated the camera. How did I do that? <laughs> there you go. Hey, one more thing we should mention about this is that you can actually train um, Face ID to work with a mask. Well, I of. tried that, and I couldn't get it to work. Did it work well for you, Leander? Uh, I haven't actually tried it, but um, oh, I've, heard okay. that, I've heard other people have had success with it. I have heard have that same thing, though. I have heard that. And I, and I tried to do, like, the second appearance mode with the mask on, and I couldn't get it to work. So maybe I did something wrong. Plus, Apple's supposed to be working on this too, isn't it? Didn't they say they were going to do a Face ID update to work with masks? Uh, that sounds vaguely familiar. I think, I think that was. Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I just I don't remember where it came from, but I think they officially said they were going to do that. I would love if they implemented some kind of feature like that because I really do hate having to unlock my phone with the pass the passcode, especially when you use Apple Pay and stuff. I think for me, part of my problem is like when I'm trying to train for the second appearance. I mean, look at this jawline. Look at this. 
it's like one of my most prominent features, right? So if you cover this with a mask and all you leave is this, it's like the phone's like, wait a second. Where did that immaculate jawline go? I can't unlock <laughs> yeah, this. Right. I can't take the chance. It's gone. And, and how could you? There's no way you could hide it. So clearly this is not AirFond. And it doesn't unlock, and I have to use my passcode, you know. But uh, you guys give it a shot. It might work for you, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Chinless wonder. Fantastic. <laughs> well, you got that goatee, so if you cover that up, it, it might not it might not work for you. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, there's one other part of this story, Lewis, that we should probably touch on. And oh, that all is right. The, you wanna... No, no, yeah. you go ahead. The folding part, right? Oh, that's all right. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm not going to do it. I know you want to do it. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> You're trying to give it to me. I'm like, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll take it if you want me to take it. But I, I it's happen. another uh, another part of this report. Uh, Apple supposedly has been uh, working on a prototype of a an iPhone with a folding screen. Um, the goal is to fit a larger display into a smaller device. Uh, did, did we actually write that? Did he write that? <laughs> Fired. Fired. Uh, horse head. Boy. Was horse head. <laughs> Here comes the horse head. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but uh, supposedly he says it won't happen for years. Uh, and the thing I remember about this is just saying that uh, there had been um, reports of like a, a clam clamshell kind of thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, folding kind of a flip phone kind of thing. Uh, I think that, uh, I think Prosser's the big uh, source on that one. And he, he's been saying that's also in prototype. But uh, this report, which I think came out today, God, I, I'm all confused today. Um, Supposedly, German say no, it's just the one. So, uh, just the one type of folding phone, and it's the big, like, uh, I guess, like a, a, a iPhone size thing that folds out to be more like an uh, iPad mini size, something like that, right? I would definitely be interested in a phone like this. I kind of like that folding design with the screen that folds, as long as they do it well. I feel like all the folding phones, <laughs> well, the ones that don't fold on a hinge, the ones that actually have a folding screen, I feel like the, the screens are really like, kind of like garbagey. I mean, well, you know, they, the creases and all that. Right. Well, there, there was some other weird report. When, were, were we talking about this last week? or No, it was, this was, once again, this was Prosser on one of his videos. He was talking about saying that Apple has worked with, they're working to come up with some kind of, you know, chemical restructure of glass so that glass can fold i every time i hear that rumor i my brain just kind of melts down how in the world can that possibly work how can glass actually fold can as prosser said can somebody please explain that to me <laughs> i mean i because i just uh that's like that's like sci-fi type of stuff you know uh, they won't be able to make it fold flat for sure well how i mean i mean if they can if they can build it so that it can have like a really um, sharp bend. I could see that happening, but they're not going to be able to make it fold flat for sure. This is why I think it's more likely that Apple is going to do something on a hinge, right? Like some of the new Microsoft products where they'll have like a folding device. Like, with, are you talking about two size. separate screens? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, two separate screens. Because there's going to be a, a hinge no matter what. But I see what you're saying. Yeah, you're saying like two iPhones welded, it welded together with a hinge. Yeah, essentially. Two so separate hinge, right? Opens this way as opposed to clam, where yeah. it, it folds gotcha. on itself like this. I, I, I just from the from what I've seen, the technology that does this is they always have weird screens that have some kind of weird quirk, like a bend in the middle or creases or something, and that seems like a pretty big trade off to me. So it seems more realistic to do something with a hinge where you have like basically, yeah, like you said, two iPhones hinged together that you can open and close and have them be super slim. That would be pretty cool. Leander, were you going to say something? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> well, you are going to be now because we're moving on to iPad <laughs> mini six and oh, this right, is your yeah. story and we're going to so be the iPad... some... Yeah, go ahead. Go on. No, nothing. I was going <laughs> to set you up for the story, but you were, diving right into it, so I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just going to go self -starter. into browser mode and let you handle it. Take it away, Leander. I <laughs> iPad 6 Mini. All right, so this one actually isn't a German story for once. Um, so the iPad Mini 6 might be getting the big redesign it deserves. So Apple's smallest tablet is allegedly going about to get the redesign so many people have hoped for. The screen bezels on the 2021 iPad Mini will shrink significantly, supposedly allowing the display to increase to over 9 inches and become nearly edge-to-edge. -edge. So last year, a reliable Apple prognosticator, Ming-Chi Kuo, said the company is prepping a tablet between 8.5 and 9 inches to be released during the first half of 2021. Um, Leaker XLeak7, a.k.a. David uh, Kowalski, 
shared CAD drawings of the 2021 iPad Mini with the Italian site Pig2. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that part. <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling up Pig2 right now. Okay. Yeah. You don't <laughs> want to de- 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 <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. This is so complicated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the drawings of them made is horrendous. So the, so, wow. The big, so the big redesign is an edge to edge screen. So the edge-to-edge screen in the 2021 iPad Mini leaves uh, no room for a home button, so Apple's allegedly replacing this with an in-screen fingerprint scanner, something the company is also supposedly considering for the iPhone 13. So there you go. Maybe, they, maybe they're going on from buttons to, to screens. I mean, you know, there's something to be said for that, right? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So I'm looking at the, uh, the mock-ups right now. They have a Touch ID in this screen. There's no way that is happening, I don't think. <laughs> That's not going to happen, I don't think. But they do have a hole punch here at the top for the little camera module, which I think that would be really cool. I kind of like that that design aesthetic where they just punch out a little hole for the camera, and that way there's no reason for a notch. I kind of like how clean that looks. But, yeah, this the idea that this is going to have Touch ID So these built are, these are the renders screen. from CAD drawing? This is a render made from, a, from an official CAD drawing, yeah? Or I, well, what is reported to be an official CAD drawing. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. It's not, but it's not some. It's not some concept made by some right wacko. Well, we don't know if he's a wacko, <laughs> but uh, I mean, this Touch ID uh, example what, looks what pretty wacko to me. What kind of side is Pig Two? Uh, yeah, I don't know, but they have a they they they, ha- they literally have a pig's snout in their in their branding at the top. <laughs> so if you go to it's like, if you go to uh, like a, a Truffle pig searching out truffles. Only the truffles are apple secrets. Oh, maybe that's it. Oh, uh, is that what it is? Yeah, okay. I know. Just, you know, I'm just trying Lewis, to pull all together. Lewis for the win. Yeah, so it's P I G T pig snout U. <laughs> pig two. <laughs> ziggy piggy, ziggy piggy. Yeah, so, man, this looks like a sleek device right here. I would love if this actually came to fruition. And uh, I would love if we got in-screen touch id that's been a dream of mine for a long time i really miss touch id i like having face id but it's nice to have the option to do both because sometimes face id your face is just too far away or you know you're trying to unlock your phone as it's on the way to your face and you don't want to have to like position it right in front of your face right to, to make it unlock so i hate to say but this this looks totally suspect to me these renders because it's using the wrong design language you know apple's moved on to rounded the sharp edges. edges now right yeah it's got the old rounded edges well, they were saying that this iPad update is going to retain the rounded edges and is not going to move to the new design language. And I don't know if that's suspicious or not because this is going to be a budget iPad. So is it surprising that they are not going to change the design language? Maybe not. They might just leave it as is because this is a budget iPad. What about the whole sweeping away the Johnny Ive design era kind of you know theory that we were talking about? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I, I can't say that I'm terribly disappointed about that. And actually, I'm really gra- I'm glad that you brought that up because that kind of ties into that. Well, it ties into this upcoming story about the, the updated <laughs> Mac. Is it I feel For the longest time, Apple was form over function. And as much as I love form, we got to have some function built in. And I feel like maybe now that <clears throat> uh, dear leader Johnny Ive is gone, as much as I loved him, I, it's good that Apple seems like they're returning to more of a function perspective and not purely form. They're willing to make things slightly, slightly thicker. In fact, part of the story was that the iPad mini was going to get slightly thicker. It seems like they're willing to make things slightly thicker to add more battery life, which is so hugely practical. That makes me happy to hear that. And <clears throat> on this MacBook Pro story, which we'll talk about here in just a sec, they're going to be adding more ports. And they're apparently thinking about adding MagSafe. And they're apparently thinking about removing the touch bar. And there's just a lot of things that they're considering that seem like maybe if Dear Johnny was still there, that they might not be willing to do. In fact, I just set myself up to this story. I just did it. So let me just, just, let me just dive <laughs> right into this story right here. This is one of my favorite stories of the entire year. I know <laughs> we're only three weeks in. It's pretty, pretty, yeah. But I feel like this might end up being one of my favorite stories of the whole year. So MagSafe could make a triumphant return to MacBook Pro. The original MagSafe charger was something that I loved. Many people loved it. It was, in effect, 
on the 2006 MacBook Pros all the way through 2016, okay? During that time, it was used on every MacBook, the MacBook Pro, the MacBook, the MacBook Air. And in 2016, much to my chagrin, Apple started to phase out MagSafe in lieu of USB-C, which I thought was a terrible idea. According to a Friday report from the Germinator, he's back. Apple is bringing back MagSafe for this year's MacBook Pro refresh. The connector will have a similar design to the elongated, elongated pill shape original MagSafe. MagSafe. It will provide faster charging for the MacBook, which is really exciting. Uh, it will also, according to this report, the, Mag, the MacBook Pros will also ditch the touch bar, include more ports, and will also not use the butterfly keyboards, which I think we all expected. In other words, it's basically like a 2015 MacBook Pro, but with all the current technology that you've wanted. And they will apparently have a 14 and 16 inch model. And they're going to have, according to the report, a updated M series chip with even more cores. So we've talked a lot about the power of the M1 Max. And this might be the M2 or something, some other derivative that's even more powerful than what we've seen so far. It's going to be like the power version of the chip. So all in all, this is super exciting news to me especially with the return of MagSafe, which was one of the best inventions in computing technology in the history of computers, in my opinion. How many times have you had your MacBook or MacBook Pro pulled off a ledge by someone walking by? My kids pulled mine off twice already. And my, my daughter was pushing her little stroller, and I look over, and in slow motion, I see that the cable is caught on the wheel of her little stroller, and my MacBook Pro is slowly being pulled off the table, and I'm like, trying to lurch for it and it just you know falls onto the ground now now thankfully we have like this really great 70s shag carpet on the ground there so <laughs> eight inches of pile yeah i had like eight or nine inches of pile it didn't get damaged in the slightest so that was nice uh, so you know but it could have gotten really damaged but the other thing that i think well, is really exciting is the fact that they might ch these might charge your macbook pro faster one of the limitations of USB-C is it's only capable of up to 100 watts of power transfer and if you had MagSafe, maybe you could do like 120, 130 and actually charge your MacBook Pro much quicker. What are you going to say, Leander? Uh, I was gonna, well, yeah, what, plug it into your uh, Tesla charger and it'd be charged up in three seconds. Mm -hmm. It'd be uh, uh, a ball of fire another five seconds after that. <laughs> This this must be um, it's going to be its own. They're going to be returning to its to to a to a power connector, right? Because this won't be a data connector to connection too. I mean, that's the reason why they ditched MagSafe with the USB C charging, right? Because it was a data as well as a power connection, right? And they don't want it um, pulling the plug on it. You know, if you're if you're doing some kind of data transfer, is that does that sound reasonable? That you does know, sound the reasonable. Why they ditched it? Yeah, I don't know if so, that's why they did it, but that does sound like. That, that was the that was the speculation I saw. That would be the only reason why they would have ditched it. Um, so that would, means they would have to go back to having a, 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 a you know a dedicated charge port, right, to right. get MagSafe back. Yep. If that logic still exists. So, but then again, they're adding more ports, so everyone's happy with that. The one thing that people will miss is that you can plug in. You won't be able to plug in on any any port you want, which you can do now. Well, my guess is is that they're they're not going to take the charging functionality away from USB C. They're just going to add MagSafe. But your your MacBook well, will still work the exact same way it does now. Well, this is what I was just saying. You see, I th I, th I think th this is why I'm s wondering whether they would do that because I'm kind of skeptical they would for the same reason why they ditched it in the first place, which is that they, they don't want MagSafe to interrupt data connections. Uh huh. So this is the, if they do bring back MagSafe, then they would have to bring it back as a dedicated charging on a dedicated charging port. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so the MagSafe port would be a dedicated... So you're saying that the charging potential for the other Thunderbolt slash USB-C ports would be removed. Is that what you're saying? I guess, yeah. You okay, so to, you, I, I don't think they would do that. that. I, I think that the MagSafe would be in addition to what you already have. Why would they take the charging functionality away from USB-C? Now, you're saying it's because they don't want you to interrupt a data transfer, but that... I feel like that is such a rare scenario because most people just use their computers on a desk, especially if they're plugged in transferring data, that why not be able to have both? Interesting fact, have you ever wondered how many <laughs> chargers you can have plugged into your MacBook Pro? I actually had to do some research on this recently because I wanted to have my MacBook Pro plugged into the charger as well as to a dock that provides power because most docks, in fact, I think all docks, 
even now, still don't provide the 96 watts of charging power that the, that the 16-inch MacBook Pro needs in order to fully charge and be used at the same time, especially under like heavy loads. And I learned that the MacBook Pro, actually any of the MacBooks with the USB-C connection, will select the most powerful charging uh, cable that you plug into it. So you can have a dock that provides 85 watts of power and the original 96 watts power charger all plugged into your MacBook Pro at the same time, and it will automatically draw power from the thing that has the most potential to output wattage, right? So you could probably have a... MagSafe plugged in and a dock that char- that allows or that provides power at the same time and the MacBook Pro or the MacBook will smartly choose where it's going to draw its power from. I think they're going to let you do all of the above, especially, well, just imagine this. So you have MagSafe. It's able to charge your MacBook a lot faster. All, they also are saying they're going to add ports. Now, we don't know what kind of ports they're going to be adding. I'm hoping that at the very least we get SD card. Because removing that port was a huge mistake. And now I have all these stupid adapters that I have to use every time I want to download stuff from my SD card. And everything takes SD cards now. Like, literally everything. Why would you get rid of that? I'm also hoping... Let me zoom in on this. Fingers crossed. Can you guys see it? (laughs) Fingers crossed. Got that? We do double. USB A. USB A. Ah, Good God. What about a floppy disk? (laughs) I'm and also hoping they port. add a USB C floppy disk drive. What do you think about that? <laughs> Horrible. You're going backwards. You're going backwards, man. You're going backwards. See, like, I, I, there's a good debate to be had here about this whole, you know, G Johnny Johnny I vacation of Apple and going back and and putting back in this stuff that he got rid of. And I, I think in a lot of cases, you know, the, the stuff that they've done that was being controversial um, has been, you know, almost universally better. Like, you know, why, why would you want, why do you, like, I, I, I don't use um, SD cards anymore because you can airdrop everything. Oh, and come on. Well, maybe in your use cases, but when I am, okay, well, you can airdrop everything, but if I'm going to be pulling video off of my, off my camera, how am I supposed to airdrop that? I have to plug have to get you it on my You plug first. it in, though. You so say you plug it into USB-C. I mean, you don't have to pop the card and then put, put the card in. Oh, you're, like, you're saying like plug the camera in via USB C. Yeah, I can't do that with my camera though. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. It doesn't even have USB C. So it's just so much easier to just pull out the SD card slot. Plus the SD card slot, it reads a lot faster than putting things into device transfer mode. So I have a so I'm using this great mixer right here called the Roadcaster Pro. I've talked about it before on the show. And you can plop in a micro SD card slot to record everything, which is what I'm doing right now. And it also has a, a data transfer mode. So you can turn on data transfer mode and just plug this into your computer and transfer the data. But it's like, if I had to guess, I'd say it's 20% as fast as using just the SD card slot. It's so much faster to just put the SD card slot or the SD card into the slot and just pull the data off that way. Mm, I'm just yeah, saying there's okay, a lot well, of pro scenarios where using an SD card is kind of... Well, this is the problem needed, they face, you know? isn't it? You know, they're, they're, in a, they're in an ecosystem where you have a lot of devices that have all these different connection standards or different connection methods and methodologies and cards and, and cables and whatever, you know. So, you know, I, I think, you know, the purity of, of Johnny Ive's vision of trying to get rid of ports and cables and, and, you know, what have you, is I kind of agree with, you know, I like that progression, that the, the, you know, that pushing the tech towards ever more wireless connections and losing you know those uh, those old analog connectors and and analog ways of doing things uh, 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 sorry you know plugging stuff in like i i would love it if you didn't have to plug anything into anything like you know it would be great wouldn't it be ideal if you could have a macbook that had no ports on it whatsoever if everything else around it you know were able to interface with it in an effective way so the vision i think is something to be is is is, is compelling to me you know what i mean but then you've got the reality of, of today's ecosystem where you've got all these older devices that have to be plugged in or that you've got to pop a card out and read the data off of that card so the reality is you know this is why they have all the dongles and stuff isn't it but so i think there's an interesting debate to be had between the two these two visions i don't want to see them go back to usb a that would be crazy well look i don't think usb a is going to happen but i think it would be practical and i want my macbook pro to be a swiss Mm -hmm. army knife it would be useful to have USB-A because there are peripherals that I have that use USB-A and 
USBA isn't going anywhere anytime soon. I, I, I don't know this for sure, but it feels like USBA is still the dominant uh, connection port. For now, for now. For it's, now, it's getting, supp yeah. it's getting suppl supplanted by USB-C, but it's slow. I agree. It's taken know, yeah. forever. I don't know why it's taking so long. So I feel like with Apple, their, their progressiveness, their willingness to move to an area where they, they see courage, progress Stephen. happening. Courage. <laughs> courage. <laughs> If you want to use that word, but it's, it's, it's true though, because I mean, you, you could probably go pick up, you could probably go down to uh, Best Buy now and go look at some, you know, uh, uh, Windows laptop, and I'll bet they have all those legacy ports. Oh, they do, absolutely. For sure, you know, and but this is, I think, this is something that stymied, you know, um, Windows, especially for, uh, 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 you know, you go back five, ten years ago when Apple started doing stuff like the MacBook Air, you know, when they were really pushing towards pushing the design, you know, before that. All of the laptops you get on, a, on on the Windows side, you know, they had everything. Those hideous serial printer ports, and they had ports for every single thing you could imagine. I mean, there was more holes in it than a sieve. Um, and I think Apple's done every the whole computer industry a, a big service by, you know, saying we're going to ditch this legacy stuff. We're going to move it forward. We're going to, you know, we we have to boldly go, push it to the, these new technologies. And I think you know this is there's a little bit of that. You know, one of them to go backwards and start adding stuff that they took out, I think is, you know, I, I don't know if it's the best, you know, design, the best thing you would be wanting from Apple. Like, I'd rather see them be pushing forward, even if there's periods of pain where you can't <laughs> plug all your old USB-A devices in, you know, okay, well, you've got to <clears> sacrifice. <throat> it's You've got to move with the times. But the problem is sometimes they say, well, we're going to boldly go where no one was gone before, and then they go there, and no one goes with them. It's just them. <laughs> And I don't so know. They have to they, look at they, they choose form over practicality, and they and they are stubbornly, they're stubborn about some of their choices that they made, some of the design decisions that they made. And even though they had they go in that direction, and then no one goes with them, and they say, "Well, we're going to stay here until everyone catches up." But then it's like five or six years before, if ever, people actually go that direction. And so you're left with a computer that is missing a lot of really practical ports. I think that USB-A is super practical. Now, look, I don't think they're going to go back to it. That's just a pipe dream. But an SD card slot, MagSafe, I mean, there's just things that they remove because they're trying to be bold. But those predictions, those visions end up being hallucinations. <laughs> they're not actually <laughs> coming to fruition. No one goes there with them. And so yeah. you're left with an impractical machine. And now what do you have to do? You end up buying dongles for everything. And I... I'm not a huge fan of dongles. Well, I don't like having dongles for everything. It's just annoying to have to carry those all around. Well, right, but you know, they've, 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 it's it's like it's when do you find that balance, you know? And as <laughs> someone was saying, well, so there was some discussion about this this morning on Twitter, and they're saying it's the eighty twenty rule in in design, where you're designed for the eighty percent of the major, the you know, the the the, the most use cases represent the eighty percent, and then the twenty percent of those like edge cases, you know, where you where you've got somebody who wants to plug in. Uh, a, p a parallel port printer or whatever, you know. But I mean, do you want to put in the parallel port printer for everybody? No, of course not. That person has to go get, you know, that 20% that want that has to go get a dongle. And so I think, you know, like, I think that the debate is 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 more pertinent when you're talking about the at the high end, you know, the pro machines, right? The the pro laptops and the pro desktop. Like, you know, the the, the trash can Mac Pro, that was the that was the worst machine they ever made, didn't it? Because it didn't have any connectors or just a couple, right? It was, you, know, you could hardly plug anything into or, or upgrade the thing. You couldn't upgrade any of the internals. Um, you know, that was, I think, the, the, you know, the, your, where you're saying that, that Johnny I is putting form over function. That was, that was definitely form over function. Um, and I think, you know, that's, I, I'd say there's, you know, for someone like you, you want to get a tower, right? Where, where you could pl plug in some like PCI cards or something like that into the back where you could add those connectors that you want. Yeah, and I can do that. I, I think there, like you said, there's a balance. And sometimes in a effort to be progressive, they remove things they probably shouldn't have removed. I think a great example is, and I know I keep repeating myself, but these are not antiqu antiquated ports. Like USB-A is still ubiquitous, okay? Ethernet, still ubiquitous. And Wi-Fi is never going to be nearly as fast, at least not anytime soon, as Ethernet. So for me... I would love to see them add like a 10G Ethernet port. I would love to see them add a really fast SD cards, XD card port, USB-A. I know it's old, but it's still everywhere. And the industry doesn't move as fast as Apple. So if they move to USB-C, Thunderbolt, and the industry doesn't move with them, well, now all of a sudden you have to either buy dongles or replace all your accessories. 
And some of these accessories last 10 years. Like if you have a RAID array or something, you don't need to replace the whole RAID array or you don't want to because it, it might have five, six years of life left, but now all of a sudden you can't attach it to your MacBook Pro without a dongle. It just adds all this extra complication. I, dongles are their vision. I know. people. Some people really <laughs> love dongles. I just am not a fan of dongles. Like I said, I would rather have more ports and the utility of having maybe some legacy ports on there, but they're things that still are used commonly. And then, sure, let's get rid of uh, the floppy disk drive. Let's get rid of the printer ports, maybe the SCSI drive. <laughs> Was that a SCSI port? Is that what they call that, a SCSI port or something? Yeah, SCSI. Remember SCSI? VGA. Yeah, I do. What I a headache that was. One, you remember you had, to, like, you, had to manu- you had to use those um, little settings, uh, the little pins to, to actually determine. You had to tell it in hardware what number it was on the chain. Do you remember that? What a that, nightmare that, that, that was. was uh, that was before my time, I think. I never had to do that. <laughs> oh, it was a real headache, real, real headache. But I know, I'm thinking about like the headphone port, you know, on the iPhone. Like, you know, I honestly have not missed that once. I have, I have. I'm not, I'm not super, I'm not super sad about that one. But I have had, I have wanted to use headphones with my iPhone before, and I just can't without using that little adapter, which I can never freaking find. It's always, yeah. it's perpetually yeah. lost. As soon as I got it, I lost it because I almost never right. use it. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess for me, I would always prefer to have practicality. Well, or some practicality over just having the newest cutting cutting edge portless machine. I think portless is going to be a huge bummer when they finally do that because the physical connections, I think, are probably always going to be faster than the wireless connections, at least for the well, yeah, but, f- future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, for sure. You know, I, I think in, in, you know, in terms of Ethernet over Wi-Fi and, and stuff like that, that's definitely true, but... Um, you know, I think a lot of the, the, the improvements, a lot of the stuff they've done have made the devices much, much better. You know, like I, like I don't want to, like with the iPhone, I don't want to plug it into anything ever again. Why, I, I, all I do is cheat charging now. You know, like I don't plug it into the lightning adapter. And cheat charging is way, way better. It's a much better way to charge your phone. Except it's far slower. It's slower, yeah, for It's sure, way but. slower. So perfect, perfect example. All right, let's, let's talk about <laughs> iPhone portless, right? So you're going to move into cheat charging. Cheat charging is not nearly as fast. So I have a 20 watt charger that I got from Anker. So I mean Anker. Anker. I can't. I can't. My brain will not let me not say it in a German accent. <laughs> Anker. It will not let me say it non-German accent. So Anker has a great 20 watt charger, and there's a lot of good chargers out there on the market now. And and commonly, I will be using my phone and realize, oh, the battery is low, and I need to go somewhere in 30 minutes. So I need to charge this fast. Well, on a wireless charger, you're going to be there for at least 90 minutes charging your phone if you want to get it all the way up to 100%. But with the physical lightning adapter, you can have it charged up almost completely in 30 minutes with a 20-watt charger. So you might well, always be using wireless, but if you're in a pinch and you need to charge fast, you need that physical connect, that physical connection. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. That's absolutely true. But you know, like, I mean, you know, how often do you need it in a pinch? Like, I, I all the time. you know, I can honestly say <laughs> <laughs> that I, I haven't needed to do that. Um, maybe like once or twice, you know, in the last in the last year or so. Yeah, we've well, lost your house t- like once or twice, right? Well, that's true. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a good that, point. That's a good point, Lewis. I mean, yeah. I gotta admit, yeah, these aren't normal times. But normally, you just plunk it on. You know, I, I I charge it up at night. I just plunk it on the on the chi charger overnight, and it's charged up, and it's good for the next day. You know, so. Yeah, I guess I don't charge my phone at night. I, I only charge it when it needs to be charged. So, because I, I don't like having the what battery. The? I don't know. I mean, it's it's kind of an old habit. I used to do it because I didn't want the battery. Oh, here we go. Charged, you, right? got some, <laughs> you got some weird, weird <laughs> charging habits. It's this is why. <laughs> weird charging habits. <laughs> That's what we've uncovered. I have super weird charging habits. I like to let my phone go. I like to let it go down before I charge it all the way up. I think charging it when you're at 70%, charging it back up to 100%, that's weird. I don't do that. So and I don't charge it overnight either because I, well, I don't have a wireless charger in my room, but also because <laughs> I don't want my phone sitting there at 100% all night, which I know it doesn't do anymore. Now it can smart charge and take it up to 80%, and then it charges itself to 100 like right before you get up. I'm not on a predictable schedule. I got oh my kids, God, man. A- I'm getting up all different times of the night and day, so like then you pick up your phone, and it's only at 80%. I like to be in control. I like to know what's going on with my charging. So I charge it on my own time. And I know exactly when what? I'm ready to charge it. I'm not gonna let the software so when handle do you that charge for me. It? Like when it, in the morning, when it dies, when it, when it's like, yeah, when it when it is like, hey, you need to charge. You're at twenty percent. I'm like, all right, dude, 
bust out the lightning. I got it right here. Ready for this phone? So here it a, goes. It's a different time every day. A different. Yeah, it's, it's literally thing. a different time every day. Wow, the, yeah. the AI must be really freaking out. On it your doesn't phone. know. It doesn't know what to do with my <laughs> charging. It, it never tries to charge and hold. It literally never does that. So, I wish actually it gave you an option to activate that feature manually, so that you could just charge your phone and then and then have it hold it at eighty percent, so that your your battery doesn't get degraded. Like on the MacBook Pro especially, because I pretty much always have my MacBook Pro charged in. It'd be really cool if instead of the AI doing it, you could just say, "Hey, just leave it eighty percent. Don't." charge it to 100% until I tell you to do it and then it would just hold it there that would be a great feature to add I can't believe we talked this long about charging habits <laughs> you should do an app for that I mean, maybe can. maybe you can make an app for that that seems like the world's weirdest app that with only one person who ever won it Earth and Elijah <laughs> from Seattle Washington but I mean uh, actually I, I would love it because then my, my uh, MacBook battery would actually not need to be replaced probably See? there you go I mean, my MacBook Pro battery is majorly degraded because I left it plugged in all the time. And it would just keep the battery at 100%. And now the battery life has been shortened like 12%, the total capacity. Is that the because, answer to that, though? You keep it at 80% instead, and then that would... Yeah, so that's that's why that technology works that way, is because... What does an Apple do this? Well, they do, but it's it's powered by AI. So when you plug it in, it learns your charging habits it will charge your iPhone up to 80% and it holds it there until the time that it thinks that you're going to be getting up. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. But if you, if you have a unpredictable schedule, then it just doesn't work at all because it doesn't know when you're going to be charging your phone. So it'd be nice if you could activate that feature and just say, Hey, whenever I plug my iPhone in, just charge it to 80% and then give me a pop-up that says, are you ready for a hundred percent? And I hit go and then it tops it up to a hundred percent or something. I don't know. I think that'd be really useful, hmm. but Apple doesn't want to do that. that, that. Huh? I wonder if you can make an app that did that. Maybe. Maybe we should search the App Store. Maybe it already exists. Mm. App, app opportunity right there. That's a that's a big money maker right there. But for people who aren't totally anal about charging, you know, most people don't care about this stuff. They just want to plug it in and just have it just work. Uh, all right. So just to uh, summarize real fast, because <laughs> we got off on a tangent there. Holy moly about charging. Who Bring guessed, it home. Whoever guessed that was going to happen. So uh, new MacBook Pro with no touch bar replaced with the physical buttons i don't do this very often i'm gonna raise the roof for that one i'm raising the roof that's what i'm doing right now and magsafe which will charge the macbook pro faster than USB-C. another great thing more ports which we have confirmed from our discussion will mean usba scuzzy uh vga and usba at the very least and then a 14 and 16 inch model and faster next-gen M-series chips with even more cores. That's an exciting MacBook Pro right there. That's like the dream machine right there. And for those of you out there using the 2015 MacBook Pro, and I know there's many of you out there because you don't want to upgrade to the uh, just the one port. Soon it's just going to have one port, just, just one Apple port on the side <laughs> that you could plug into the Apple dock, which has all the other actual ports <laughs> that you'll need. Uh, this might be an exciting upgrade for you guys. But... I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there, guys. We just spent like 35 minutes arguing about charging habits. And uh, for those of you that are still left. I need to myself. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, right. I need charging up. Hey, I got my. Oh, did we lose? Time. Oh, what is that? Salad. Oh, you got a salad there ready to recharge. Okay, well, let's go ahead and wrap <laughs> it up there. Then That's all, cold, all the cold gas we have for you guys this week. If you want to come say hi and continue the conversation, we're all on Twitter. I'm at Arifon, E-R-F-O-N. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. Leander is at LK. This has been the Coldcast, the best 30 plus minute Apple conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the Coldcast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening. Let's look at Leander just rubbing his eyes. Over the I know. I got to get out of here. three and a half uh, Apple conversations you're going to hear all week long. <laughs> we'll see you guys mm, next time. Thirty minute charging conversation you're gonna hear all week long. What number we have? Four seven. Four seven six, Leander. Four seven six. We're still live. No f bombs, please. No f bombs.
Well, this last up, they get taken 10 seconds to save. Alright, I'm out of here. <laughs>